Hey, this is Darius Ramsey with the Ramsey Rose Group and Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. So welcome back to our How to Buy a House series. So in uh, video number one, um, if you haven't seen it so already, I'll post a link below. Um, so part one, we talked about financing. Part two, which this video is going to be about, is about how to find the right agent for you. Stay tuned. So for those that are not using me as a real estate agent, um, finding the right real estate agent is actually pretty key. Um, most buyers are going to be online, on Zillow, Realtor, Trulia, HomeSnap, all these different places. And the first thing they're going to do is they see a house they want to like and they want to hit the button that says, you know what, let me reach out to the agent where they're actually going to be working with the listing agent. The listing agent actually doesn't work for you as a buyer. The listing agent works for the seller. So they're going to do everything that they can to try to get the seller to price until you become their client. So what's important is to make sure that you actually find an agent, a buyer's agent that's going to represent you exclusively, whether it's new construction, um, you're buying a home from your cousin, or it doesn't really matter, um, but you want to make sure that you have representation. A real estate agent is going to look out for your best interests and try to find the right deal for the right, the best price, the best terms for you. They're working for you. So if you're a first time home buyer, uh, one of the things that I would suggest is when you're interviewing or First thing I would suggest is to interview different real estate agents. Um, to me, and what I try to tell my clients and people that are in a different area, when you're talking to a real estate agent, you want to make sure that one, check to see if you're a first time home buyer, check with that particular agent that you're going to be interviewing with to find out like, hey, how many homes have you sold? How many first time home buyers have you helped in your career? You want someone that has some experience, but even if you decide to go with someone who's newer because they're going to need experience too, you just want to make sure that they are adept and they're knowledgeable about working with first-time home buyers and some of the hurdles and also programs that are out there that's going to be available to first-time home buyers. Um, so, like I said, number one, interview different agents. And it's okay if they interview a bunch of if you just let them know ahead of time, like, hey, I am going to meet with a couple other you know, buyers agents because I want to find out the best fit for myself. Uh, one thing that you actually want to consider is your personality type. My personality is not going to be for everybody. So I think it's very important for a, a buyer when you are interviewing a real estate agent is to find someone that there's a personality match. Um, the reason why I say that is if you're a very analytical person, you probably don't want to speak with someone or work with an agent who is just too vibrant and gives you everything outside of what you really called and asked for. Um, so that's why finding an agent, interviewing different agents to find one that you're going to feel comfortable with, confident in their ability, and also a good personality fit. It's going to take you a very long way. Another question to ask um, if you're new to the market and you're working with a real estate agent is to find out whether or not that agent is working as a single agent or if they're a part of a team. Once again, there's pros and cons to both. If you're a single agent and you're working with a particular client, let's say you're now at six, seven, eight different clients that you're working on at one time and you're one agent, do you have the resources backing you or does that agent have the resources backing them that they can handle so many different clients at one time without dropping the ball in any area? Um, whether or not that person is a single agent, they have an assistant. Assistant can go a long way um, with making sure that the details are not missed, that if you are sketching a home inspection, that inspection gets done in time. When you're working with a team, uh, some of those things are alleviated. Most teams are actually going to have a structure in place where as soon as the offers gets written, they have someone separately that's going to go ahead and monitor the dates on a transaction to make sure that you hit those dates and that you don't put your earnest money deposit at risk. Another thing to... Uh, agents versus single agents versus teams is that if you are working with an agent who is just working by themselves and they just so happen to be you know busy at a particular time where you want to go see a house does that agent have a strong enough relationship with other agents within their office that they can say hey jane i have a client jim who wants to go see a house i'm actually only going to be on other appointments at this time but we know how this market is it's pretty hot um, would you mind showing this particular home to this particular client on that day? So you can be a single agent, be extremely successful, as long as you are able to build those relationships with other agents or have a strong understanding of what's going on with your calendar. For me, I chose to go the team route. I do have a team. Um, there are several buyer's agents, listing agents, and we also have... Uh, 
a transaction coordinator and admin staff. So when we put a home under contract, that file gets turned over. You're, I'm still your main point of contact, but when it comes to making sure that the contract is out and that we're getting everything that we need from the lenders, the home inspectors, and everything that goes into writing a contract and getting you to the closing table, we have someone whose specific job is to make sure that we hit those deadlines because we don't want to risk your earnest money deposit. And it kind of helps make us very, very smooth transaction. Is that agent full-time or are they part-time? Do they have a full-time job where they're working nine to five, but you're only available to see houses from three to five? Is that really going to be a nice little mix or fit for you? So those are some of the things that you want to make sure that one, when you're available, your agent is going to be available. If they're working by themselves, how many people are they currently working with? And what's their cap? If they're currently working with six, seven people that they have under contract right now, are they really going to have the time if they're working by themselves to work with another person? Because in my opinion, I've been doing this for a while, um, that you get to a point where you have to know what your cap is. How many people can I make sure I'm giving 110% effort to before that starts to drop off because I'm handling and juggling too many things? So that's why a thing like a team it may work for you or someone that has an assistant, has a good team behind them that when it comes to scheduling home inspections and scheduling appraisals, following up with lenders, that you have a system in place, that agent has a system in place to make sure that you don't fall between the cracks. For example, right now, our market is an extreme seller's market. So as soon as a home hits the market in central Pennsylvania, we have about 24 to 48 hours, if that, to get into the house with a 15-minute showing and decide whether or not this is going to be the home for you to write an offer. But if you're dealing with someone who is booked up on appointments or, you know, they have a full-time job and they can't get to you until a certain time, but that time frame is booked up and you could lose a day, that could actually put you at a disadvantage. Um, on the flip side, full-time agents, if they have a calendar that's full as well, are they going to actually have time to fit you in? So when interviewing your, your particular agent, you definitely want to make sure that, hey, how many clients am I working with? And do you have enough time in your schedule to accommodate yet another client? Another very important question to ask when talking to and interviewing different real estate agents is, let's say you are a veteran and you want to use VA financing. Don't be afraid to ask that real estate agent like, hey, how many vets have you asked? How many, how many people have you helped in the past 12 to 24 months that have been using VA financing? Same goes for first-time home buyers as well. Um, you want to make sure that that person has the experience and the knowledge and the capacity to help you out to the best of their ability to make sure that you have a very, very smooth transaction. Outside of asking how many transactions they've actually put together in the past 12 to 24 months, you can actually ask them, hey, of the people that you did help that were first time home buyers, um, can I get a referral? Can I reach out to one of them to see how that transaction, how that process works? Most agents are going to be extremely okay with you asking a previous or past client how the transaction was. If they've done their job and they've done a great job, they're going to have raving, raving fans. Um, so they'll be more than happy to pass that information on to you in and, and hopes that you and your family and your coworkers and everybody that you know is going to work, want to work with that agent. The last question, well, not really the last question, but another question that I would definitely ask any agents that you are interviewing to be to represent you in a transaction is find out from them. And also you can do research on your own. What is their reputation with other agents in the area? Um, the reason why I say that is, hey, they may have, you know, worked with different clients, but they could have made that transaction so difficult on the other side that maybe that other agent that was working with them they might be a little bit hesitant on not just presenting your offer, whether they have to present your offer, but wanting to work with that agent again because that agent could have made things so difficult. Um, on the flip side, when you have those great relationships with other agents in the area, it could make or break whether or not you get a contract. Let's say you have an offer that's the same as the next person, but that agent worked with the other person and knows that, hey, transactions didn't go through on time, too many hiccups but they work with this agent and things went smooth. They enjoyed working on a transaction coordinator. This, the process was just flawless. Best believe that that agent is gonna let their seller know in that particular situation, let their seller know like, hey, we got the same offer, but I enjoy working with this particular person. I haven't had great experience working with this person. So it may be one of those things when you really start to narrow down the agents that you actually wanna work with, look at some of their past sales. Don't be afraid to reach out to that agent that they work on the other side and ask how the process was and if they were work with a code broker. Now, they're not gonna to say too many things like talk bad about them because it goes against our uh, code of ethics, but they could give you some insight on whether or not it was a smooth and clean transaction. And if it was a matter of, you know, clients not getting things done on time and we're gonna cut this part out because I'm going too far. 
one last thing. You definitely want to check with your agent to make sure they have resources. And what I mean by resources is, do they have lenders that they can go to? Uh, lenders that they've worked with in the past that they work very well with and are confident that they can get things done in a clean and timely fashion. You also want to make sure that they have a list of different home inspectors that they work with, that they built those relationships with, as well as vendors, plumbers, electricians, and things of that nature, so that if anything does happen in the home inspection phase, you're pretty confident that when you go back to the seller that, hey, I'm going to need a quote on getting the roof redone so that you can go back to the seller and say, hey, we got a quote from a roofer. This is how much it's going to cost because the roof is going to need to be replaced. So finding an agent that has a list of resources that they have access to so that if anything does go wrong on the transactions, you're pretty confident that that, that agent and their list of vendors can get the job done. In some cases, in some of the relationships that we've been able to build ourselves, um, a lot of these repairs that need to get done, we have some vendors that actually will wait to put the money f to pay for the repairs. They'll do the repairs ahead of time, but they won't get paid into settlement date because we built that relationship with those vendors um, that they trust that we're going to get them to the closing table. A lot of sellers out there may be having a lot of equity in their home but they may not have the cash right now. So making sure that you're finding an agent that has the resources, just in case anything does go bad, that they can get things done. And even after closing too, you bought your house three months from now, a year from now, got a little plumbing leak, you wanna make sure that you could be able to call that agent it's like, hey, do you have a list of plumbers in the area that you've worked with in the past that you can refer me to? Um, having that's gonna be very, very helpful um, for you as a buyer and for you as a long-term client. Did I mention that working with a buyer's agent is, for the most part, free for a buyer? When I say for the most part, the majority of the time is actually going to be free. When a seller meets with a listing agent or a seller's agent, they determine what the commission that the seller is going to pay. The listing agent and the listing agent is going to split with the buyer. So when I say that mainly or mostly it's free, the majority of the time that commission is going to meet the minimum commission of the real estate agent. Some real estate agents do have a minimum commission. If the home that you're buying, the commission does not meet that minimum commission, then you're going to be responsible for the difference. So that's one of the questions that you might want to ask the listing agent or your buyer's agent or your agent is whether or not they have a minimum commission. And if your price range that you're going to be looking in, is that minimum commission going to be met? Real estate agents and realtors we're very possessive. What I mean by that is when you're working with a real estate agent, an agent that is going to put your relationship between their client and the agent above the transaction, your happiness is going to be the most important thing, not whether or not the deal closes. Um, most agents like ourselves or some agents like ourselves, we're not going to sit up here and try to sell your house that we think is going to be a bad fit for you. We are more likely to talk you out of writing an offer on the house than we are going to be to sit up here and say, you know, what, hey, you need to write an offer. You need to write an offer. At the end of the day, your happiness with the home that you purchase is going to be the most important thing to us. Not only that is we are possessive in the fact that we want to be your real estate agents for life. You want to find yourself a real estate agent that wants to be your real estate agent for life, not just for you, but for your friends, your family member, your coworkers, the person that you see down the street. We want you singing our praises like, look, if you're thinking about buying a house, this particular agent or this team rocked. I would suggest nobody else besides that. So if you're re your real estate agent doesn't have that mindset that he's trying or they're trying to be your real estate agent for life and is going to put your needs and wants above all else, interview a different agent. So that's it for now. Um, make sure you check out the next part of this video, which is going to be identifying a home or a neighborhood, um, getting out, searching for houses, and how we get you through once you go on the contract to the closing table. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, um, hit the alert, do whatever you have to do to make sure you check out the next video. Talk to you soon. Thanks.